You're listening to Bloomberg Business Week with Carol Masser and Tim Stenevec on Bloomberg Radio. We're going to talk about something different right now. We have a really cool guest. Or the uh, same, depending on your pet. (laughs) That's true. He has bicycled more than 3,400 miles from Montreal to the Pacific Ocean, classically trained French chef. He's founded a couple of food companies. He has sold them. He has spent more than three decades thinking about the vegetarian food world, creating everything from a veggie, hot dog, and more, Matt. So he knows the space. All right, I'm interested. I'm very interested to hear about this because I would love to be a vegetarian if I could. The way we treat, especially factory farmed, which is yep. almost all uh, of our animals from cows to chickens, is disgusting. Yeah, the process is. On the other nice hand, meat is so yummy and. Um, it's packed with protein, right? Also yummy is, is seafood. And he's uh, now got a new venture involving vegan seafood. It's known uh, as Conscious Foods. So with us is uh, Chef Eve Potvin. He's president and founder of Gardein. I believe I'm saying it I hopefully correctly. And Conscious Foods with us on Zoom from Vancouver, British Columbia. And forgive me if I've mispronounced. I studied a lot of Spanish, not a lot of French. Um, nice but, to- but it's a famous name here in New York, <laughs> Potvin. You know. Yes, it is. It is. That's that is true. Right. Oh, welcome, welcome. Tell us a little bit about yourself because you have done some really interesting stuff and you've really spent a lot of time on, you know, the vegetarian world and the plant-based food world. How come? Well, Matt, I'm, I'm like you. I'm, I'm a flexitarian. So, you know, I, I believe there's, uh, you, know, you, you should always try to make a contribution for a better world. And so, I, I was like you say, just be a trained chef, and somehow I, I fumble into the uh, plant-based business. And for the last over thirty years, I've been developing different brand, and very excited to uh, present uh, Conscious, Conscious with a K, uh, today. So we, we're a new, innovative brand, and we're on a mission to change uh, the way the people eat by providing a line of frozen sushi, onigiri, and poke bowl. That this is close to my heart that it tastes good first and and it's good for the people, good for the planet. And we're so excited to launch uh, nationwide with whole food this week. I mean, it's, I think an issue that's close to our hearts as well. Carol and I are both scuba divers Mm -hmm. um, and we've all seen the, uh, the problems. Well, all of us that have been underwater uh, have seen the problems that um, giant fishing expeditions create and, and then, for a while, I thought, okay, well, factory farm salmon, that must be a better alternative. Turns out it really isn't because they don't do a good job of raising those fish either. Um, but the taste is has been a problem for me. I've only tried artificial, you know, plant-based like beef burgers, burgers, like Impossible Burger yeah. or what's the other one? A Beyond. Beyond Meat. Uh, I couldn't mm-hmm. really stomach either one of them. Um, so mm-hmm. how do you overcome that problem? And that's why I'm so excited to be here and talking to you, Matt and Carol, because evidently you are conscious, you are aware of your environment and the way the younger population today, they vote with their mouth and they say, well, I want a better future. So it has to be something that tastes good and is good for the environment. And another thing that we're excited about conscious is that we have price parity. So a lot of the uh, company that you mentioned before, I think there's something like 20% of the population that would like to incorporate plant-based protein in their diet, but they say it's too expensive. Well, we're the first, I think, of this uh, new generation innovative brand that it's price parity. It's not more expensive than the traditional traditional protein. So, but because of my chef background, uh, it has to taste good. And a consumer now, they're looking for sustainable choice that are affordable. And so you can go to uh, Whole Food and buy our California roll, uh, our Japanese Korean nigiri, or a salmon poke bowl, and it's gonna cost you $7.99 or $8.99. You don't have to break the bank to eat consciously now. I guess the one thing too I will go back to is things like Impossible and Beyond Meat. What I had a hard part, I uh, had a problem with Eve is that there was a lot of sodium in them. <laughs> and to me, that wasn't a, I think of plant based proteins and I think healthier and less mm. impact on the environment. Like it, it has to tick off a bunch of boxes for me in order and yeah. it has to taste good. So tell us yeah. about the 
nutritional value or some of the metrics um, so that if I turn over the box, what am I going to see when it comes to sodium or what By have the way, you? that's a lot of boxes. It has to tick uh, better for the environment. Yep. It has to cost the same or around the same, right? It's got to taste good. Yep. And it's got to be good for you because obviously, Eve, you know, uh, there's a lot of protein in meat and it's not packed with salt, as Carol says. Yes. Totally right. Uh, and so we are looking at, and, and Matt, you're, you're, you're totally right. Uh, you know, in our lifetime, we know that somewhere in the next 20, 30 years, we're going to drive electric car or any other form of, of car that is not fueled by petroleum. But it's the same thing in our life. We know most of the farm, most of the fish we're going to eat is going to be farm, farm raised. And you know, a lot of salmon on the market right now, it's artificial color, artificial flavor, etc. So we're on a mission to change the way we eat. I said earlier is because we have a third of the sodium of traditional sushi that you eat in the supermarket. Uh, we have less fat and we have ingredients that are easily recognizable. So our tuna as first ingredients is organic tomato. The second one is konjac. Konjac is a root vegetable that has tremendous dietary fiber and it's good for you. So, so yes, you, there's many bucks that the customer is looking. First of all is the price. Well, we take care of that one. Nutritional, we have about half of the protein right now uh, that uh, mm. salmon or tuna has. But it's okay. Most people don't buy just because of the protein. They buy because of the whole package. But we are working very closely to trying to increase the level of protein. No artificial ingredient, non-GMO, organic ingredients, etc. So I think we've done a good job, but putting the package, but most important, it's convenient. Like my wife likes to say frozen to yummy in five minutes. So, uh, and people ask me that, why do you need frozen sushi? Well, there's 20,000 sushi restaurant in North America. There's a need for it to have it in your freezer. Eve, but you know, something like salmon, right? I go for it because of the omega-3 fatty acids, right? Yeah. That's good for me. And I would rather, you know, I kind of grew up in a family, you know, everything in moderation and better to, eat as true to how it is grown or cultivated, hopefully, um, and do less of it. So do I get that benefit? You do. We, we have omega-3 comes from different sources. One of them is the, the fish oil, but it's also vegetable oil that we incorporate uh, in our uh, product that has the same level as omega-3 that you have in traditional fish. Interesting. Really interesting. Are you convinced? Low low I'm convinced. I'm, I'll tell you what. I'm convinced enough. Uh, we have it. a Whole Foods right down here try on it. 3rd and uh, 57th. I'll walk down there and get some for sure. Yeah, and try Fantastic. it. Just, uh, just follow the instruction. Very three easy way to prepare it. Uh, microwave one minute. If you don't like microwave, you can put the, the patent pending packaging in hot water for eight minutes. Or you could leave it at room temperature and it's ready for lunch. We're talking with Eve Puffin, president and founder of Conscious Foods on Zoom from Vancouver, British Columbia. Hey, Eve, one thing I wanted to ask you, I mean, Matt and I talk a lot about food and just the way we produce things and trying to feed this world. And a lot of the ways that we do it are, are not great for the environment. There's also a lot of food waste. And there's an interesting Bloomberg Opinion columnist um, that talks about big food should be ESG's next target, basically just going after the ultra processed uh, food makers. Should be ESG's first target. <laughs> should have been ESG's first target. Because if you want to stop um, okay. uh, carbon emissions, right, you got to go after the beef industry, even before you go after the internal combustion engine. So how do you think about all of this? You you know, you've been working in the food industry for a long time. How do you think about it and what is a better way forward? Well, it's about diversity. You know, uh, last year, August, we, we reached a milestone of uh, 8 billion in population. We know that, uh, and that was one of the reasons, you know, uh, I have a, a younger daughter. When she was born, uh, not that long ago, 25 years ago, the population was 3.7 billion. Hmm. Now we're at eight and we're going to be at 10 billion. So 
Uh, and that was my idea. And I said, it makes a lot of sense. We know, I think in Vancouver, salmon reached the price of $30 a pound this summer. So, so traditional protein is going to go higher and higher in price. So why not diversify the protein and use the plant base? Uh, you know, and the question is having manufacturer and processor like me, innovator that takes those protein, the pea protein, uh, all the different sorts of protein, put it in a way, in a, in a form and in a shape that people are accustomed to. Because people won't start feeding themselves lentil and chickpea and the thing like this. It's too complicated. So, so and, and that's what we do. We use traditional sushi uh, and we make our own snow crab, our own tuna, our own salmon. And I'm really excited for you, Matt, to go try it because you're going to say, wow, this tastes great. And uh, and I I feel very proud about what we accomplished. And I think uh, the world is changing. The younger population is voting with their mouth. And I think it's a question of using all our source of protein. That is what we're going to find the solution, not just beef, not just seafood, but using the protein from a variety of sorts. Seaweed is a fantastic source of protein. All right. So and you, the sushi it's packed full of protein. What's the protein and the calorie uh, value of that of that sushi? Those California rolls. Calorie is about three hundred and fifty calorie for eight eight coin, uh, and it's about uh, you know traditional uh, sushi is about eight percent protein. This is about four percent. So, but most people don't go to the sushi and say I'm eating there because of of protein. I of course want more not. Protein. Yeah. Most people have too much protein in their diet. That's 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 the reality. So I think it's more about nutrition. What you bring nutrition, and I think our product is pack of uh, nutrition. We have all the vitamin D, A, B, etc. That your body needs. So and it, but most important is what we're offering is convenience. You can have sushi, onigiri, poke bowl at lunch, dinner, snack, have a party with your friend. So having the 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 product available in your freezer and ready in five minutes. And it's about giving a choice to the consumer that uh, whenever you want, you can have a product that you like. Like I said earlier, 20,000 sushi, 5,000 poke bowl restaurant, there's a market for it. So Eve, as demand, let's assume that this takes off and as demand picks up, can you keep it at the cost level that you have now? Or will, just like with kind of regular food, it just feels like, as you said, the growing population, like demand just has gotten out of control. And as the developed world has a much more, you know, the developing world has more of a developed diet, like, right, there's more demand of that traditional food thing. So the cost, I'm just curious about the process and the cost as demand mm -hmm. ramps up. What, well, are the main, what are the main inputs, peas? Well, the rice comes from uh, California. All our vegetables are from British Columbia. So we're trying to buy local as possible, but we have a 34,000 square feet facility in uh, in uh, in Vancouver over here. We can produce 4,000 roll an hour, uh, so that's that's a fair amount of, of volume. But our plan is to open a factory or a, a processing facility in the U.S., one in Asia, and one in Europe. So your question, uh, uh, Carol, is more about ingredient has you increased the demand right well the beauty with uh, with uh, with root vegetable is you can grow more uh you know from uh, uh i'm not anti beef i'm not anti uh fish but it's just it's a not uh, a, a, a logical way to grow your protein it takes 18 months to raise a cattle and and half of the you know take you you feed it more than what you get at the end so versus the plant-based protein that's why it makes so much sense even we with climate to, change even with climate change making it sometimes more problematic or difficult and depend, depend what you're growing uh carol you yeah. see if you're growing more corn or more wheat or more soy but uh, uh you know there's a lot of place uh in asia for example that's where the root vegetable uh, conscious it's all over uh asia but rice there's lots of room to grow rice mm -hmm. and so and you need to you need to eat something. You know, at one point people asked me why, in my previous business, why are you using wheat or soy, etc. Well, I said I don't use milk, I don't use dairy, I don't use egg. You need to eat food, something. You can't just live with 
with uh, water and air. And I think the, the, the food we grow, the food we use at Conscious is very good. And yes, it's sustainable. Interesting. All right, we're going to leave it on that note. Really, really fascinating. Um, and I do feel like more and more we continue to see the food space slowly being disrupted, if you will. Yeah. Well, right? and I also the deeper I look into it, the more problems I have with the way our food is produced or farmed or caught. Um, and as, as I said, you know, salmon's one of the biggest conundrums because I don't want to support industrial fishing and I don't want to support the factory farming of salmon, but I love salmon. There was just a story, did you see it in the New York Times about the fate of Alaska's king salmon and starving orcas? The orcas like don't have enough food and so they're trying to figure out what to do and they're thinking about maybe that we have to stop fishing them, but then you've got you know folks that rely on it for and, their and livelihood. And we can, you can't, they won't stop. Oh, I don't know, it's just tricky. Um, Eve, Eve, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Eve Putman, hopefully you'll come back soon and give us an update on the business. President and founder of Conscious Foods joining us on Zoom from Vancouver, British Columbia.